and the excitement, unlock a chance to talk to the founder and president of a Malay Muslim movement for Christmas and members of the Islamic Economic Study Circle. Take my the non-profit movement in to get the all Malay Muslims in Malaysia and other countries. We live in the center of Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei and Thailand to strengthen the Uthman among fellow Muslims. On 20th November 2012, Hikmat had presented a list of 10 requests to the Chief Minister of Malacca and one of the requests was item number 6 that is to implement the reverse in meeting the dinar and their come in Islamic transaction or Mu'amala. Let's watch the interview. As a to next week's episode on the single Diham from Malaysia, we talk to various organisations who advocate the return of the Dina and Dirham for usage within the Malaysian economic system, one of which is Sigma. Sigma was founded by Mr. Rajiv Sabi. Yes. Thank you very much for coming on board. Okay. And with him is Mr. Tafik Saleh, a member of Sigma Islamic Economic Study Circle. Thank you, Mr. Tafik. Right. Mr. Rajiv, can you give a brief introduction of what Sigma is all about? Is it an NGO? Or is it a movement or something similar to the Occupy Wall Street kind of uh, organization? Well, you can say it's all of that. Actually, it is, uh, I think the, the, the more correct word it is, it started as a Facebook community. Yeah? Facebook community of like-minded people who have been talking about, who have been following the uh, work and scenarios regarding uh, uh, what is happening to the Islamic world, the attacks and all that. And then later on in Malaysia itself, uh, the, the, the scene where it seems that there are people attacking the values of the Malay and Islam. So these people have been talking and giving ideas about it. So we just started our community and then start having events and that's how Hikmah started. Actually Hikmah is a short form. Hikmah is an Arabic, Arabic and Muslim word for wisdom. Yeah? Uh, it is a short form for impunan, kedaulatan, Islam and zaman, which could be literally translated as uh, Malay, Islam, sovereignty, and times meet. So we discuss this sort of thing, and then we meet together and try to find a way of, well, changing things, I guess. Right. So today, how many members that he must have in his life? We don't have official members. What we have is live on Facebook page, which is about, at, at, at this uh, last check, was about 2,818. But we've conducted uh, three events so far, of a quite significance. The first one was held in Shah Alam on 4 November. That is three weeks after Hikma was started and founded. And we got about 350 people from various political backgrounds, various organizations, even Silat Movement, Martial Arts, and even groups of Tarikat, yeah, religious groups and all that. And we managed to sit together and share our minds. And that's the first event. And three weeks later, we have another one in Malacca, which is on 25th November 2012 and later we have the most recent one is on 27 January 2013 in Dumont which already got about, uh, more than 700 people coming okay. I was made to understand that in last year, in last year Hima has presented to the Chief Minister of Malacca certain demands um, I think it was 10 of them and I would like to zoom in or zero in on item number 6 where Hima requested or demanded that I think there was two points to the to the note saying that um, Sharia law should supersede the present constitution and the second element was to advocate the return of Dina and Dila. Can you elaborate on that? Okay, first of all I would say that rather than call it demands, I'd say it is recommendations. Requests and recommendations and that uh, we forged together as a group taking uh, ideas of the participants and then <coughs> uh, into 10 points which we believe should be at the points that should be uh, done to bring back the sovereignty of Malay and Islam in Malaysia as per during the glorious days of the Amlaki Sultanate. Okay, when it comes to point number 6 where he said that uh, the Sharia law should supersede the common law and we put it together uh, with the usage of Muhammad Islam, which means uh, Islam transition, economics and all, using the dinar and dinar. Uh, it is because, you know, when you 
say Isyam ah law, that means you use the saying of the Prophet. And the Prophet said that money must have intrinsic value in it. Right? So when the Prophet says this hadith, it is part of the Sharia law. Yeah? So when you want to impose that position, you must have a law that says, use this, use the harm. Dina and the and actually make the money obsolete all the time. Yeah. Mr. Taufik, as a member of Himmat Islamic Economic Study Circle, is Himmat advocating just the return of Dina and Dira or to face out fiat of paper money or can we use it to get done it and use paper money against Dina and Dira? What exactly is uh, Himmat trying to advocate here? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, to begin, um, I think we cannot claim, Ikmah cannot claim to be the leader or the sole uh, proponent of the dinar and dirham evolution. I'm calling it evolution because really looking at the way the economic structure, the global economic structure has been built up, it will take uh, more than a generation for things to change. So, so, we'll, so we'll not see the changes in our lifetime? Uh, the only changes that you will see is for instance whereby uh, certain uh, businesses accept Dinar and Dinar um, as a mode of exchange for their, their services or products. But uh, there is still uh, we still need time to build up the critical man uh, whereby um, if I do accept your money, your Dinar or your Dinar, but um, then I want to buy something like uh, a drink in the 7 Eleven or at the coffee shop. If I give it uh, a dirham, I will get a change in a value that I accept, it, which would have to be um, dinar, dirham, or fulus. Right now, there is no critical mass. But so, in other words, correct me if I'm wrong, you are saying that as an initial step, we just introduce this, but later on, it might eventually replace fiat money. Inshallah. But to be absolutely honest with you, I do not foresee things changing um, in an organic way. I expect certain world events to happen. For there will be chaos before the some semblance of of obedience, I suppose. Nobody wants chaos, but most of all, sometimes nobody wants, but somebody is planning it. <laughs> so, okay. So what exactly is Sigma doing to? Advocate the return of Dina and Dinam in the Malaysian or be it in the international economic court. I believe that Dina also has members from Singapore, Indonesia, Brunei, and some other What exactly is Dina doing to return the usage of Dina? Well, as uh, um, Mr. Ransi mentioned, uh, during the Dina event, uh, there was talk by uh, Dina and Dinam experts. And they had organized uh, like uh, groups that buy a exchange ideas on uh, how to do this. Mr. Rajiv and Mr. Kapit, what would your be your parting thoughts to the viewers of Islamic Finance Project at Federal University? Mr. Topic. Well, um, I think that it is a good idea. Uh, to propagate dinar and the arm. I know that at this time it is difficult for you to use it as a, a mode of exchange for goods and services on a large scale. But we have to start. And I think uh, with the support of our Almighty and Prophet Muhammad we can get it. Mr. Raji, before I ask you about your final thoughts, the real thoughts of Islamic Finance today, would Ima be organizing other events in the future? Inshallah, we'll be doing at least, uh, I think, probably two, three events right. and this year. Though. Right, and the next event will be? Inshallah, it's one time. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, we are splitting it for 16 March. Right. Probably at Kimara. Right. And mm -hmm. do you foresee Kimara going overseas, like because you have members in Singapore, mm -hmm. Indonesia, Brunei? Do you see it happening? Uh, we might soon have it in Singapore for uh, the Hari Raya Festival. Okay. Um, so what are your final thoughts to the viewers of Family Finance Today? I'd say uh, if you look at the Child World event and you realize there are people out there that are cabal now that behind the scenes which are planning things to create a new world order. Yeah? It is 
a possibility that the world war will be coming soon. And when that happens, I tell you, the current economic system will break down and paper money will become worthless. And that's where Dina and Diha will really come into the forefront. Okay, thirdly. The question now boils down to how is it feasible or how could we apply the silver deer hum in our daily transactions? All this after the break. Today, visit the retired Navy Captain Haji Awaluddin Mohal, who is a dinar and dirham activist, and Dato Ismail Hamza, a user of dinar and dirham in Malaysia, who will share with us how to use dinar and dirham in our daily mu'amala or transaction. Since 2010, Dr. Ismail, for example, has used more than 150,000 ringgit worth of silver dirhams for mu'amala and zakat payments. 